This episode of Storytellers is brought to you by these fine companies. I'm Bill Doner. Some people call me the greatest promoter ever. I don't know about that. But I'm right here with Storytellers on Competition Plus TV. Well, I have to really take you back in time. This was in the 70s, you know, in the mid 70s. And things were a lot different than they are now. I mean, we didn't have the internet, you didn't have the sort of thing. I, I hesitate to use the poem, the word porn, for a really nice gal and an actress like Linda Lovelace. But at any rate, my Northwest National Open, we always open the season up in the Northwest with that event. Uh, I think we had a race from before it, but the really big thing was the National Open. And uh, I would have 16 funny cars, 16 dragsters. You know, you know, just for our own racing, and uh, it was terrific. We'd have, you know, the Blue Max and the Snake and the Mongoose. Everybody would be up there. And I'd start running the ads way out in front of that thing, almost a month, teasing people. And one of the only times we ever used billboards around town and everywhere you think, we advertised in Canada and everything. So one night I'm sitting in a saloon up there in Seattle, a couple of my cronies, and I, uh, I'm telling them about this event. I said, boy. I mean, I got everybody. I'm naming off all these people are coming. This is a really big race. And one of the guys who was a newspaper guy and a pretty savvy guy looked up from his drink and he said like this to me. He said, well, if it's such a big race, how come you don't have Linda Lovelace? Well, I didn't even know who Linda Lovelace was hardly. And he said, well, go downtown Seattle and take a look. Deep Throat's playing down there. They got a big banner across the front of the theater. Calls it the 100% Gulp. He said, you got to go see Linda Lovelace. She's the biggest. Well, I never heard of Linda Lovelace. i never seen the movie or had anything to do with it. And I, and I laughed, and he kept telling me, well, you don't have Linda Lovelace. It ain't the big race. She's the hot deal all over the United States. Never had a movie like this. The first movie ever made like this. And on and on and on. following week, I had a race down at Irwindale, California, at our track down there. And I'm down there at Irwindale, and I go out to a, a function a couple nights before the race. And a guy I know that's in Hollywood sort of a guy, and married to a gal who was a playmate of the decade. His name was Dick Stewart. Her name was Annie Randall. And Stewart's telling a story about going to the Playboy Mansion the week before with a Sly Stallone and all these guys. Stewart loves to big deal me. And he says, uh, and Linda Lovelace was there. And he laughed. And I, for my interest, I said, do you know Linda Lovelace? And he, and he said, well, he said, Annie, is what she does. She was, Annie had been on the show, the Hee Haw show with Barbie Benton, who was Hefner's love life. I laughed and I said, well, you know what? I got these guys that are teasing me and really, be, I, I'd like to talk to her and see if we, you know. So anyhow, one thing leads to another. I go back to Seattle, the phone rings and a girl hollers at me. She says, you know, this gal on line one says she's Barbie Benton. And I laugh. I went, wow. So I get on the phone and think it's a joke and it isn't. Sure enough, it's Barbie Benton. And Barbie Benton says, calling me from the Playboy Mansion, and she said, I understand you'd like to talk to Linda. And I said, yeah, sure, put her on. So she gets on the phone, and I said, what would I, what would I have to do to get you to come up to this car race in Seattle? And so she tells me, and it wasn't a lot, I think she won two first-class plane tickets for her and her guy, and uh, and a thousand bucks, maybe. Might have been two thousand, I don't remember. And I said, let's do it. So we make the deal. And I recut the ads for a couple of the big time radio stations in Seattle, the Rockers, and I'd say, you know, how big is this this weekend's Northwest National Open? Well, Don the Snake for Roman, and on and I name all the racers. And I said, and even Linda Lovelace is coming from Hollywood. Well, again, a lot of people didn't even know who that was. So at, or an uproar started. You can't talk about, you should never hear. I said, wait a minute, I can't stop her. She's coming to watch a car race. Well, so anyhow, she comes and uh, my guys pick her up at the airport and I make a, a lot of stations do not have anything to do it. So I ran around all the radio stations in Seattle on Saturday morning, the first day of the race, and I had her doing live stuff on the radio stations. And they were getting thousands of calls and it got to be a, it got huge, you know. And guys were, where's Linda? What's going on? And phone was ringing in the office. Is, this, is she really out there? Well, some people hated it. Some people didn't want to be around her, including my sponsor. 
who was Skipper's Fish, Chip, and Chowder House. And they said, we don't want her name connected with us. We don't want anything to do with her. And I said, oh, don't worry. It'll be fine. We'll be fine. This whole deal. We'll, it'll, it'll work out. Well, now it's race day and it's Sunday morning and it uproars. I mean, really, I've got a big crowd and kids are asking. I mean, it's the strangest thing you ever saw in your life. Such a cult thing at the time. And, you know, they flat out call her a porn star. They said, now you got the biggest porn star in the world coming to us. Well, it's a big race. Everyone comes. I can't stop. And go. I'm surprised the president of the United States isn't here. Anyhow, we, have, we play the national anthem, put the flag up, play the American Canadian national anthems. I always did all that. We had a lot of Canadians. Getting ready to start the race, and all this is going on. And just before I fire the car, old Bill Shrewsbury in his wheel stand car, the LA Dart, up he comes, and he's going to do a wheel stand right down the racetrack. And he, lo and behold, both he and Linda Lovelace are out through the front of the car with their arms waving to the crowd. So the guy from Skipper Street says, I thought you weren't going to do anything with her. I said, Oh, I can't control Shrewsbury. He's a lunatic. And the crowd yelling, and I said, is, Hasn't that Linda Lovelace? I think it is. And the crowd, oh, they went berserk. Well, the thing picked up legs. It was in all the magazines. It was everywhere. And I sort of said around that the winner of the funny car category, which we had every big slammer in the country in it, was going to get to spend the night with Linda Lovelace. Ooh, it gets tacky, doesn't it? Anyhow, if I tell you who won it now it happened, I'm risking my lot of limb and life. I'll just look, I'll give you the final, however. It was between a kid, a guy named Kenny Goodell, Tiger to Oregon, the action man, and Ed the Ace McCullough. I did ride quite a bit of heat for it. I rode so much heat that the next year, for the same event, I brought in this little kid, Rodney Allen Rippey, who did ads for this little sweet little kid and his family, and he sang God Bless America on the starting line. So I was in a redemption mode. I went all the way I could to the other extreme. Uh, but boy, the Linda thing is, and it's never gone away.